Hello, welcome to this video which will help you uh, complete your final project. First thing is to watch the video how to set up Finale for ease of use. That video is made separately and it should be posted on the same page as the assignment. It's about six minutes long and it will save you a lot of time if you follow the instructions on that video. Make your process of entering all your musical information a lot easier and I will be referring to things that are explained in that video and you may not understand them unless you've watched that video. Okay, the final project is going to involve three main components. There's going to be a finale version of the product project which is going to only contain certain elements. Then there's going to be a handwritten score which will only contain certain elements. And then there's going to be an audio that you produce, uh, audio file which you produce which will contain more music than is written out. So here's how it works. Um, uh, there will be a, uh, a score and, and both in finale and handwritten. And we, that's what we'll, this video will go over is how to do the finale version of that score, which you will then sort of essentially copy in a handwritten form. And then there will be audio, and the audio can have more elements in it. It can have an intro that is not notated. It can have some kind of interlude or maybe an improvised solo. It can have a second pass through the song that has more tracks on it. There can be additional tracks at any point that are not notated. The only thing that has to be notated is your melody, your basic, very basic representation of the chords in terms of uh, long note value voice-led triads then a very basic version of your bass groove and a basic version of your drum groove. Anything more elaborate that you want to program in addition to that can be done, but it doesn't have to be notated. Okay, so this video is all about how do you uh, get your material into Finale in, and then get that information into a digital audio workstation like GarageBand or Logic or Pro Tools in a very, very easy way, at which point you then add your live tracks and your additional tracks. Okay, here we go. So um, the first section is going to be in A minor, that's your A section, and the B section, the second section, is going to be in C major, the relative major. You can use any chord sequence you like in both sections, but you cannot use the diminished chord. The diminished chord, we're avoiding use of that. If you want to use the melody and uh, musical ideas that were generated earlier in the semester uh, when we did 1564 uh, chord project. You are welcome to do that and that can be your B section. Or you can write something entirely new for your B section. The A section will be new for everybody. In this video I'm going to use the chord progression 1 minor, flat 6 major, 4 minor, flat 7 major, which comes from the song Mr. Jones and a million other songs. Uh, I'm going to use that as my example, but again, you can, you can use a different sequence um, as long as you don't use the diminished chord. So here we go. The first thing to do is to decide on your sequence. We just did that, and I'm going to now set that up. Uh, the way I would recommend you do that is you do have to have Roman numerals uh, signifying your uh, ana the analysis of your harmony. So I just said I was going to do one minor, flat six major, four minor, and flat seven major. So I'm going to get that on here. Now the way you do that in Finale in this template is by using this tool, which is called the Expression Tool. And you double click and you choose Roman numerals. And then you could search for the various Roman numerals you need. But I've set up a shortcut. The shortcut is that the diatonic major key chords will be the numbers. So when I want to do 1, 5, 6, minor, 4, all I'm doing is I'm hitting the numbers 1, 5, 6, and 4 and clicking when I'm in this tool and I would get those numbers. For the minor key ones, I, ha I can't use the same numbers, so I'm using the letters that are below the numbers. So if I want one minor, I just go to one and then I slide my finger down to the letter Q and I hit that and I get one minor. And then here I want flat six major, so I go to the number six, I slide my finger down to the letter Y, hold that down and click and I get flat six major. 
and I go to the number 4, slide my finger down to R, 4 minor, and finally 7, slide my finger down to U, and I get my flat 7 major symbol there. The next thing is to fill in my chords, voice lead. Um, if you watch the other video, you know that you can um, do some shortcuts to make this easier. I'll just do it once, and then uh, you can practice it on your own. So if I uh, didn't know how to voice lead easily in Benelli, I could start with a root position chord. I know that flat 6 major is F major, and I could do my shortcut to create my triad, which is explained on the other videos. And then I could simply do the shortcuts to lower the notes and get my voice leading happening. So now I'm going to complete my voice leading. Okay, I'm back. And again, if you don't know how to quickly enter notes, you should watch the other video. Everything is thoroughly explained in that. Now it's time for me to enter my chords. Now this is not covered in the other video, so I'm going to cover it now. The way we do that is we have our main tool palette open, which is again available on the window menu. And you click on the, um, sorry, click on the thing that looks like a major 7 chord, C major 7, click on that, it's the chord tool. And then simply click and there will be a flashing cursor and you type capital, in this case A, and then the minus symbol to get A minor. Capital F here, that means F major. Capital D with the minus symbol here. And capital G for my G major. And I've got my chord symbols now, I've got my correct chords spelled out, all voice led. Now it's time for me to do the bass. And I'm using a bass technique here called bass and kick drum uh, correlated. So in other words, the rhythm of the kick drum is the same as the rhythm of the bass. And I'm using an alternate note in the bass. I'm using a root and then a fifth. This is a very common device. Sounds like this. Okay, so I'm going to take that same idea and I'm going to do a copy it. Now, there's a very important tool for copying in Finale. It's called the filter. It's under the edit menu. And if you click to use it, uh, you will use it. And if you hit edit, you'll see what you're going to copy. And the reason it's so helpful is sometimes you just want to copy certain things and not other things. Like in this case, all I really want to copy are the notes. So I can just copy only them. And I'm going to Command C, copy them over. And of course, I've got the right rhythms, but I don't have the right notes yet. So the way we do that is, again, if we're in the selection tool, which looks like that, a shortcut to get there is to hit escape. I can select this measure and using the numbers 6 and 7 I can move up or down. 6 moves down by step, 7 moves up by step. So I'm going to move all this down to F and I have my F and my fifth above F which will give me the fifth of the chord and it's all set up. Here I need to go to D so I'm going to go up to D and I've got my roots and fifths. Now I've decided I'd rather have my fifth go down instead of up so I'm going to click and drag to select just the fifths. And I'm going to do another shortcut in the, that I detailed in the other video, which is if I hit 8, it'll go down an octave. So now I still have the fifth of the chord, but I've just gone down to the fifth. Now it's time for me to do the uh, measure with the G in it, so I need to find G, so I go 6 down to G, and now my baseline is all set up. And also I can click and uh, copy my drums, my drum groove over. And now I have a perfect bass line with roots and fifths uh, set up and very quickly. Now at this point, if I want to, I'm not going to do the melody in this video. We'll talk about that separately. But if I want to copy everything, I would go to the filter. And I would say I want to copy chords. I want to copy notes. And I also want to copy expressions because I want the expressions of the Roman numerals. And I, I choose all that and I say OK. And then I grab everything and um, I click here. And then I shift click here to select those measures. And I do Command C to copy. And I bring it down here to just copy it into place. And there it is, perfectly duplicated. So if you wanted to repeat your chord sequence twice, that's what you would do. If you wanted to do a new set of chords here, then you would put those in. Now I've completed my A section in minor. 
now it's time for me to go over to my major key section. I already put in the Roman numerals for that. Okay, we're back. So I wanted to show you how to label your sections. So we go to the expression tool here, click there, double click rather, do um, in this case uh, miscellaneous, and go to the number, the letter A, and click on it, assign that, and that will be your A section. You want to put it right above the uh, repeat sign there start your C major section. So I put in my chords already, I put in my voice lead triads, so they're cool. Now it's time to do something different with the bass and drums. So one of the requirements is that you have a some kind of different groove in the second section of the song. So one of the easiest ways, now you can do something more elaborate than this if you like, but one of the easiest ways to vary a groove is to vary the kick drum pattern. So uh, I'm going to do that now, and the way I do that is I go to layer 2, which you get to by going down here, and then I'm going to simply, I'm going to come up with a different pattern. So I'm going to choose a different note value and just sing to myself a pattern, and I think I'll do something that's more syncopated, so something like, uh, this way I would get a little bit more syncopated drum beat. Okay, and now I'm going to make my bass do the same rhythm. So I just simply go back to layer one, staying over by tying over by hitting the, le the number, the letter T. And then I'm going to hit a quarter note here and an eighth note here. So you notice what I'm doing is I'm, I'm letting my bass notes sustain, but they're totally matching up with my kick drum. Okay, but now I want to get a little variety. So I'm going to maybe use the fifth. So I arrow back over and I grab this note and move it um, down to the fifth of the chord, G. And I'll do the same thing with this. Go back to my root here, and then um, something called a passing tone, which is a note that moves by step into a target. So I'm going to use that note as a very quick passing tone into my next bass note. So I've now set up a bass uh, line that sets up with a new, more syncopated kick drum, and now I have this uh, new groove. Okay, and now I can just take my trick from before, copy and paste, and I may have to adapt my notes a bit, and I'm all set. Now I have my new bass line and drums. Now you notice I said a uh, approach note is a note that approaches a target by step, but this note is not approaching by step, so I'm going to move that down so that it does approach by step. Cool, now I'm ready to copy that and then export to Digital Audio Workstation. Okay, now we're going to save ourselves a lot of time by exporting all this musical information into a Digital Audio Workstation. I'm going to use GarageBand. What you do is you set up a blank project of GarageBand. Take your Finale file and you go to File, Export, MIDI. I'm going to send it to my desktop so I can easily find it and then hit Save. And then when you come to this window, just say OK, go through that. Now it's on the desktop. I'm going to get rid of that. And it looks like this. And I'm simply going to grab it and drag it in here. And it'll ask if you want to import the tempo and just say yes, because you can always change it later. But And what it does is it, it brings in the information um, from your tracks, and it, it assigns them tracks. Sometimes it assigns them erroneously. In this case, it did it the right way. It assigned the keyboards to a keyboard sound. It put the drum set to a drum sound. But it doesn't always do that. So you might have to choose the correct sound over here. So now we're ready for, you know, you could, you know, add a track and add your melody. And then don't forget that you can do things like double this. You can just option drag and then change this to some other sound and now you'll have a doubled chord layer with strings or something. <music> then of course I could add other live parts and you could even add more percussion parts or if you know how to write it out you can write out you know use a more complicated drum group but you might need to get my help to write that out okay that's it